I think this passage from Amos is actually Robert's favorite passage in the Bible. Where is Robert? Or maybe Ruthie's. Or maybe every person who's ever led worship. Or maybe Clyde's. Right? Because what does, what does this say? It's a passage from Amos, right? Amos talks to us. And who is Amos? He's a prophet. Yes. He's a, he's a minor prophet. He's one of the prophets we don't really talk about that much. He's actually the oldest written prophet there is. Amos came before all of the major prophets. Um, and we say, I say written, right? Because um, Amos didn't write his stuff down. Somebody else wrote his stuff down. But he's actually the oldest written prophet that spoke in the land. He was a prophet from the southern kingdom that went to the northern kingdom to do his prophesying. And he was a, by trade, what did he do? The very first thing that was read this morning. He was a shepherd. He had no training whatsoever. He didn't go to seminary. He didn't go to Bible classes. He was a simple man who watched sheep in the field. God came to him and said, I want you to go and tell these people this. And so Amos went and he told the northern kingdom. I'm going to read this from a little bit different version than we had this morning. Seek good and not evil and live. You talk about God, the God of the angel armies being your best friend. Well, live like it and maybe it will happen. Hate evil and love good. Then work it out in the public square. Maybe God, the God of the angel armies, will notice your remnant and be gracious. I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with your conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, your press your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. I've had it all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice, justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. That's what I want. And that's all I want. That's why I said it's Robert's favorite verse. And Ruthie's favorite verse, right? Because Amos says that what you're doing here doesn't matter a hill of beans. Right? I could ask everybody here and, and, and say, why did you come here this morning? I know why they're here this morning. Which is a really good reason. But why did you come here this morning? Ruthie's here because if she didn't come, I would call her and say, um, excuse me, where are you? I'm here because if I wasn't here, somebody would call me and go, excuse me, where are you? No, I'm the other reasons that we're here. But why are you here? Because I'll give you a hard time. Is that a good reason to come to worship? Nancy has her, Nancy kind of has her hand up. Why are you here, Nancy? To give thanks for all. Does God really want our thanks? That's a trick question. <laughs> the answer to that is no and yes. <laughs> right? Why do we come here? I know some of the, the shorter members of our, of our gathering here this morning would say that I'm here because my mother and father dragged me here. Right? I'm here because the pastor said I had to be here and I have to take sermon notes. I wonder how many of you are going to write that down on your sermon notes this morning. You know, we're here to praise the Lord. Does he need that? Does he want that? He deserves it. That's, that's a good answer. He deserves it. Do we think by coming here on Sunday morning that we fulfill our religious duty and we've done everything we need to do? You see, this, this reading says that God doesn't like our songs. He doesn't like our offerings. He doesn't like the fatted calf being burned on the altar. He doesn't like the things we do that we think we have to do to be right with Him. Because we're doing them for the wrong reasons. 
We're not gathering to praise Him. We're not gathering to worship Him. We're not gathering Him to give Him thanks. We're gathering because we think this is what we have to do. We're gathering because somebody told us this is where we need to be and this is what we're supposed to do. How many of you have read anything over the past week that has been bad news that has happened in our world? You're in church, people. I just asked you, how many of you read anything about bad news over the past week? <laughs> if you don't raise your hand, I, that tells me you don't read. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, just last week when I was gone to a conference, and if you want to see what I did, there's a picture in my office. It's actually, a, <laughs> Clyde's laughing because he's seen the picture. It's a really good picture. You should go in and look at it. No, I had a great, restful, spirit-filled, it took you long enough to laugh at that. I had a great, restful, spirit-filled weekend last weekend. But while I was there and while Pastor Harvey was here with you in, in Texas, a man went into a church and gunned down 26 people. Now, see, I could stand up here all I could stand up here for the next 20 minutes and talk politically about what we need to do about guns and what we need to do about this. And I and I see the glares and I can feel the <laughs> right because I have guns at home and you're not going to take them from me. And it's not about that. And it's not about mental illness and it's not about insert whatever you want to insert here. Right? It's about the fact that we live in a world that is filled with evil. And what are we supposed to do about it? Right? How many of you read after reading about this or hearing about this shooting in Texas? People on Facebook posting, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Did you see that? How many of you have ever said that? How many of you actually pray after you say that? That's, that's good. I like that. Do you do anything else? I'm on several Facebook groups with other pastors in our denomination and in, in, in denominations beyond just ours. And there's discussion in these groups about how we need to now start locking our doors on Sunday mornings after worship starts. And how we need to lock our doors through the weeks because we want to keep people out. Is that doing what God has called us to do? Is that being who God has called us to be? I saw lots of people and there's lots of people on Facebook that talked about how all of you, all of us who are posting our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Don't don't know what we're saying and don't know what we're doing. And it's the modern day version of Amos, right? I'm not saying that thoughts and prayers are bad. We need those. Everybody needs to be prayed for. Everybody needs to be thought about. And we need to understand how and why we're doing that. But if it stops with, with, with us just doing thoughts and prayers, if it stops with us just praying to God that God please do something down there. And you know what? God wants to do something, but how is he going to do it? Through who? Say that louder. Us. Right? Amos is telling us you need to get up off your butts and get out there and do something. It's not enough to come in here and sit down and sing all of our pretty songs to God and come in here and give Him our hour every week and just make everything be perfect. We need to get up off of our butts and use what God has given to us and go out into the world and make a difference. That's what Amos is saying. It's not enough to just say that, I, that something needs to be done. It's not enough just to pray about it. We have to get up and do something about it because that's what God has called us to do. Living water is going to flow out of the hearts of the believers is what Jesus said in his reading this morning. God wants oceans. What did that reading say? Oceans of justice. And rivers of fairness. Right? I want justice, oceans of it, and fairness, rivers of it. And that's what God wants. He wants you to know that He's going to go with you, just like He did Amos, who He sent from His town in the southern kingdom up to someplace He didn't know about to talk to people that probably didn't like Him. Because God had given Him a message. And that's what God wants you to do to go. Out into the world and give them the message of what he's given to us. Of how much God loves him and how much God loves each and every person. And then that evil that's out there that's happening in this world, it's not going to go away. 
But we'll all be able to see it and understand it better. And we'll all be able to, to adapt and to work with it better. Because God has given us the strength and the power to do that. The hymn of the day is a song by an artist called Matt Redman. Matt Redman is a worship leader in England. London specifically, I believe. He wrote several songs. Any of you who listen to contemporary Christian music have probably heard of him and know of him. You probably even know this song. This song was written several years ago. And it was actually written because Matt Redman became so popular that people were coming to worship at the church where he was playing and they would come to hear him play. It's like a free concert every Sunday morning. And they would show up to worship, and as soon as he got done with the opening worship songs, all of these people would get up and leave. So the pastor finally, after a while, said, that's it. No more music. For at least a year, we're not having any music in worship for fire. <laughs> we're not going to sing anymore. We're going to take this back and focus completely on what God is calling us to do. And when they came back after that year, the first song that was played was this one. If you know it, sing along with me. If you don't, we will all sing the chorus together a couple times after I've sung the song. All right? <laughs> Do I need that? <laughs> I don't know if I need this, I just want to be it, so. Yeah. When the music fades, love is stripped away, and I simply long just to bring something that's a word that will bless you. It's 
It's all about you, Jesus. What a worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus.